My name is Professor Jeff Charnley, and uh, I've been at Michigan State as a professor since uh, 1985. I've taught in the Department of Writing, Rhetoric, and American Cultures. My name is Luis Guajardo. I graduated Michigan State University in 2002. I'm 33 years old. I'm Professor Richard Snyder of the Department of Zoology. I came to Michigan State University about 55 years ago as a freshman, and I've never left. How MSU came to be? Well, <laughs> uh, it's largely a function of the uh, legislature being interested in establishing a, uh, a college for uh, the study of scientific agriculture uh, in the mid-1850s. 18, and MSU uh, has the distinction of being the first land-grant uh, university or land-grant college. So 100 years after we were, we were founded as a, as a college, then we became uh, Michigan State University in 1955. John Hanna was the uh, president of the university and he had uh, free rule of the university. He built it. It was 1942 during World War II that John Hanna succeeded his father-in-law to the presidency and then he was longtime president and oversaw the transition from Michigan Agricultural College, MAC, to uh, Michigan State College and then of course Michigan State University. So that was under the tenure of John Hanna. He was a power figure, he was respected and somewhat feared. I can remember walking down Farm Lane near the auditorium, the old auditorium building, and he came the other way across, across the river, and I knew he was going to talk to me. He talked to everybody, and here he was, and he got closer and closer, and I was getting smaller and smaller, and finally he asked me, how was I? And I said, I was fine, sir, and he said, good, and went on his way, and it was the most startling afternoon for me, I survived confronting Mr. Hanna. A lot of buildings that you take for granted that are here today weren't here. Uh, once you cross the river where uh, Erickson Hall now stands, there wasn't anything. In terms of quality of life, uh, MSU was, uh, I think, in need of some of those updating, and, and it's, it's pleasant to see. They can't do them all at once. I think the improvements to Brody are great because Brody Hall complex was functional architecture at the time, very popular. Boxy, meant to be every square inch they could, meant to be used. It was not uh, meant to look uh, inspiring. I think it doesn't hurt us to you know, to, to enter the 21st century now that it's already here. And uh, so I, I look forward to not just seeing the outside of the building, but see how they use it on the inside. For right now, it looks like a shipwreck on the bottom of the Atlantic. And I can't help it, I do not like it. And the, the Louvre in Paris also, people thought that when I.M. Pei did the, did the famous uh, glass pyramid designing the new entrance, and now the French love it themselves. So if the if French can be pleased by modern architecture, I think Michigan State students should be as well. We had an interesting experience because equipment was, shall we say, more primitive than it is today. The process of uh, technological change has, has sped up. It's. It's just so different now the way like you use you utilize the computer for everything. And back then it was like just for, for specific things, write a paper, uh, send an email, I guess. Many times uh, you wished you had a faster way to compute. We did not have any computers in campus, but we did have the calculator. And the calculator was being used by graduate students, uh, some of the undergraduates taking statistics, and it was a wonder. It was uh, about half the size of an average typewriter. We all thought it was the greatest thing that came down the pike. I had a laptop myself, but I never brought it. Um, I never brought it to school because there was no point. There was no internet, and I mean, I guess you could have taken notes, but it just. I mean, now I would take it. You know, take a laptop to take notes, but back then, you, I just didn't even think about it. It is distracting when students are not 
if they're just simply taking notes, then there's no problem. But when they are web browsing, when they're trying to use their smartphones and texting during, yes, it is, it, that is distracting to classmates. Us older people <clears throat> sometimes get short-tempered with these things because we want results and we want it fast and we don't want to read the instructions. The students are, this generation, you don't have to teach them in that regard because uh, they already know how to use some of those technologies and so it's a matter of you know, sometimes a professor catching up with the students. <laughs> That's the weird thing too. I try to think about how you guys, you can text when there's a party or this. Honestly, it was all about planning. You would call up your friend on the house line and say, hey, we're going to Rick's tonight. And then it's like, okay, we'll meet you there at eight o'clock out front. There was no like, hey, I'm in the back of the line right now. Like you got there and hey, Mark, where are you? It was like yelling, old school. Interesting, isn't it? How society changes.